Tom Wilson's new contract and the season ahead with the voice of the Capitals, John Walton, next on this edition of Locked On Capitals. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms, including the SiriusXM app and on YouTube. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen each and every day. My name is Dan Holmey. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at Locked On Caps. And the best way that you can help grow the show is to subscribe to Locked On Capitals on YouTube and comment anything down below. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. So in this edition of Locked On Capitals, I am joined by the voice of the Washington Capitals on the radio side. John Walton as we talk about the Capitals coaching staff and what that means for the Caps this next season. We talk about free agency and the draft and were those moves enough to make the Capitals competitive? But just to get it going here with John, we will talk about Tom Wilson's new deal. In this edition of Locked On Capitals, we are happy to have John Walton, the voice of the Capitals on the radio side, and the Caps This Morning podcast. John, welcome to the show. And great to be with you. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you here. So the biggest news of the summer came as Tom Wilson signed his new contract. He is going to be a Capital for the next seven years or a new seven-year contract. He had a year left. What does that mean for you? Well, I think it's a bridge between where the Capitals are and where they're headed to. I mean, I think in the hockey life cycle, the Capitals have been good for so long that they're in a position here over the next few years to kind of transition back to that from missing the playoffs last year and, you know, kind of keeping up with the Joneses. But I I think, you know, it's kind of funny thinking back over the course of the last couple of months and with one year left on the contract, I think there were a lot of teams and a lot of fan bases out there that floated out some speculation saying, oh, Tom Wilson, maybe he gets traded. And you know, according to Brian McClellan and anyone who was actually near the situation, that was never going to happen. And I think those who are around this organization didn't even need to be told that. Mm-hmm. Tom Wilson is a leader on this team and has been for a long time. And to be able to know that he is going to be in the uniform for that length of time, a career capital, much like Alex Ovechkin, for that matter, uh, just makes sense to me. And I think he'll just continue to serve alongside Alex until his time is uh, upon us. And, you know, the thing about Tom Wilson, he is an interesting character. Within the D.C. market, everyone loves him. I love Tom Wilson, if you can tell. I have his jersey hanging behind me here. But around the league, scene is kind of a goon, a tough guy. And I always say most goons do not score 20-plus goals. Wilson is a three-time 20-goal scorer who broke out with a career-high 24 goals, 28 assists, and 52 points in 21-22 If there's people listening outside the D.C. market, what kind of player for you is Tom Wilson? Well, he's an intimidator for sure. And I think some of that notion about Tom, and it's tough to shake. I mean, he was a guy who would drop the mitts and he did have suspensions early in his career. But, you know, I would say for anybody that doesn't really look that closely, doesn't follow this team day to day. Uh, that Tom Wilson doesn't exist anymore. I mean, he's out there to be a deterrent. Yeah, he will get in a fight if he has to, but he doesn't even fight that much, let alone uh, some of the, you know, the notions that people have about things that happened earlier in his career. It's just not who he is. So, you know, those things aren't going to be shaken. I mean, I think if you ask people about, uh, you know, whether it's a New York Ranger or a Pittsburgh Penguin in this market, or even a Philadelphia Flyer, uh, you know, those notions are tough to shake, but Uh, He is a leader. He is a tremendously community-oriented individual. He's uh, truly one of my favorites in the room to talk to, and he's always been very generous with his time. And he is 
a, a guy who leads by example on the ice. And I think he's beloved by his teammates. I think every team in the National Hockey League would love to have Tom Wilson on their team. And I think those notions, should he have thrown on one of their sweaters instead of a Washington one, I think it would have changed pretty quickly. So uh, I listen, I, I think he's as, as good as they come, and I'm excited that he's going to be in the fold here for a long time to come. So the question now is, is it appears that Tom Wilson is going to be the captain of the Capitals once Ovi hangs up the skates about three years from now. I guess you could always sign an extension, but he has three years. And, it, and everything that I've kind of read out there is that Alex Ovechkin has taken Tom Wilson under his wing. Do you see Tom Wilson being the future captain of this team once uh, Ovi hangs up the skates? Yeah, I, I do. I mean, I think that's, uh, you know, for his longevity here growing up in the organization, 2012 draft pick. So, you know, here we are 11 years down the road and now the contract extension. I mean, he's pretty much following in those footsteps because by the time you are to the end of the contract that Tom just signed, he's going to be about here just about as long as Alex, too. So uh, nice to be able to have him in the fold and certainly excited to see it unfold. It is exciting for me. And uh, talking about, uh, the great eight, Alex Ovechkin. Uh, we know that uh, he had a historic night uh, when he passed Gordie Howe. So now it's Wayne Gretzky, 894. Alex Ovechkin, 822. Uh, I believe you were on the call the night that he got that goal. Uh, you've been associated with a lot of great moments in Capitals history. When you saw him pass Gordie Howe, what was going through your mind? Well, I mean, it was a lot of fun for sure. And I mean, there are a lot of things that happen with Alex Ovechkin. Sometimes, you know, they're coming and sometimes you don't, but all of them are pretty exciting. And to be able to, you know, be one of the guys that calls that on a night in night out basis is certainly not something that I take for granted, but you know, I mean, 800 almost snuck up on us because, you know, he was at 796 when we left on a two game road trip, had a goal in Winnipeg to make it 797 and then a team was coming home after that for a little bit. And the thought was, well, you know, Chicago's having a bit of a down here. You know, maybe he gets one or two here and he's knocking on the door when we get home. And, well, Alex had other ideas, as he generally does. And getting 798 in the game's first minute, 799 for the first period was over. And I think we all realize, because we've seen this happen a lot, whenever Alex has an opportunity to get three and he's got a couple early, you know, he rarely seems to disappoint. So, uh, and getting 800 and being able to be on the call for that uh, was a huge thrill for me. Uh, and getting back home and right before uh, the Christmas break against Winnipeg, being able to move past Gordie Howe was equally as thrilling. Uh, to be able to do it at a hat trick and get to 800 in front of just an incredible fan base in Chicago. If it couldn't happen in Washington, I think Chicago was the perfect place for it. They threw hats on the ice as if he had scored for the Blackhawks. And uh, it was just a, a great moment, a scene I'll never forget. And I'm sure glad I got to be on a call for both of them. Yeah, it was a, a special respect for uh, the Blackhawks fan to do that. And um, kind of just taking a look at his projection. I saw this in Nova Caps. If Ovechkin scores at his career average of 22-23 goals per game, he'll break the record about halfway through the 24 25 season i guess you know they say the russian machine never breaks but he is getting older he's going to be 38 uh next month what is your uh trajectory for him do you see him passing wayne gretzky at some point they're saying 24 25 i think he can do it every time people have kind of said you know ovi's washed up you know he can't do it he proves everyone wrong do you think he still has what it takes to pass wayne gretzky Absolutely. I, I think, you know, the timing is certainly, you know, open to interpretation because, you know, father time is undefeated. And as you mentioned, he will be 38, but I don't think there is, you know, really any doubt injuries withstanding. I mean, that he's, he's going to be able to get there. I think it's, you know, the, the caps weren't as good as they have been. And it was a bit of a quiet second half down the stretch, but the caps were in a, a bit of a struggle mode themselves. And, you know, I think invigorated under a uh, new head coach, new coaching staff coming in, uh, a very positive individual and a guy I've admired for a long time and Spencer Carberry. Uh, you know, I think that, you know, the retooling of the caps a little bit on the fly here. It's a little bit like NASCAR trying to go from 15 years of just terrific superior hockey capped off by the 2018 championship. But there are a lot of other good seasons in there, too, led by Alex Ovechkin. 
I think, you know, that's the part of the retooling and how that all happens is going to be a very interesting thing to watch. But uh, one of the things that I think we don't have to worry about too much with him is, you know, he always finds a way to get to the back of the net somehow. And we look forward to that continuing. All right, so coming up here after the break, we will continue to talk with John Walton as we talk about free agency and the draft. And were those moves enough? We'll talk about that straight ahead. Football season is about to kick off and FanDuel is giving you the chance to win all season long because right now when you bet on su the Super Bowl winner, you get bonus bets every time they win in the regular season. Just pick any team to win the Super Bowl and you'll get bonus bets for every victory. You can use bonus bets on spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on and start earning bonus bets with America's number one sports book. That's fanduel.com slash locked on. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Make sure and subscribe or follow Locked On Capitals wherever you find your podcasts and on YouTube. I have a lot of great guests lined up for you this summer, not to mention that training camp is just around the corner. So subscribe to Locked On Capitals today. So transitioning here a little bit here, let's talk about the draft. And a lot of people, myself, were including, were hoping for Metfei Mishkov, kind of, it's going to happen, it's going to happen, and it didn't. So the Capitals select Ryan Leonard. And I, I don't want to say he's a consolation prize. I think that Ryan Leonard is an amazing hockey player. One of the analysts said that he has muscles in his face. Uh, is he, you know, fixing to be a Tom Wilson 2.0? He said that he thinks of himself more of a Kachuk or he likes what Austin Matthews did. Um, what kind of player do you think that Ryan Leonard is uh, just in development camp? I was watching video there and uh, one of the goalies said that he broke my glove. Um, give me your thoughts on the Capitals selecting Ryan Leonard at eighth overall. Well, I mean, he has a lot of tools in the toolbox. I don't think there's any doubt about that. And, you know, I think the Matthew Kachuk, uh, Tom Wilson ish. I mean, both of those things certainly, you know, look to be a possibility with him coming out of the U S national development program. And I think we're all going to be watching Boston college this fall a little bit, just to see, you know, how that progression continues, but it's a process. And look, I mean, I think with anybody that's, that's picked uh, regardless of where they are, I mean, this is, uh, you know, the caps have been in the position where a lot of times, you know, they, they've proven that they will be patient. And I think that, you know, when you have a place to develop future capitals like the Caps have in Hershey, and obviously Ryan's not going to be there yet, but, you know, he will be at some point, just as everybody is. And, you know, I can't tell you how much I was impressed in following the Bears on their playoff run and the job that Todd Nelson does. And if, if there's a guy that you want shepherding your prospects, I know there was a lot of interest and in, his name was kicked around for a number of NHL jobs. And, you know, for him personally, I, I if that's something he wanted, I certainly would have would have pulled for him if he had gotten one. But selfishly, from a cap standpoint, I'm glad he's still here because, you know, the environment there and winning a Calder Cup championship and and doing it, you know, with, you know, night in, night out, you know, just a, a very encouraging manner with a with the prospects and. You know, and beating teams are quite frankly, man, for man, might have been better than Hershey. But, you know, they sometimes it's bigger than, you know, the sum bigger than the parts. And I, I really feel that that's what goes on there. So, you know, for Ryan Leonard and for anybody that's going to be coming through there, I think one of the capital strengths in development is being able to have uh, such a great place to develop and uh, certainly a great coach and Todd Nelson to do it. It is an exciting prospect for me to think about Tom Wilson and Leonard on the ice at the same time. I think a bit of a wrecking crew uh, would be kind of fun to watch. So in round two, the capital select Andrew Cristal picked at number 40, uh, has a really great skill set, a great passer. There were a lot of questions about why he went in the second round and not the first round. Uh, different guests that I've had on here talked about that his size and inconsistent play, but I think the ceiling is very high with him as Connor Bedard uh, said that he is one of the smartest players that he's ever played with. And whatever team drafts him is going to be very lucky. Talk to me 
about Andrew Cristal and what kind of player you think he will be for the Caps? Yeah, I think it's kind of the same thing where, you know, with these guys, it's, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of reason for upside, but I think we've just kind of, kind of wait and see. And I think that's true with all guys that you just, you've got to watch what happens over the course of the next season, two years. These guys are 18 years old, uh, you know, to be able to move forward with, uh, with development. I think that's, you know, there's obviously a lot of things that are exciting about him, but, you know, I think that's, uh, you know, that's one of the things that's fun for me is to be able to watch and see how they develop and move forward. It is exciting to to think about what this team is going to look like because what we know about the Capitals is last season they didn't have the what they were looking for. And I'm not really sure what they're going to have next season. So that brings me to the next question was free agency. Uh, the Capitals signed Max Pacioretty, uh, two million uh, contract plus two million, million more if he meets other incentives and Joel Edmondson. We know that the Caps missed the playoffs for the first time in quite some time. With the additions of Patch Reddy and Joel Edmondson, not to mention, you know, the players that are in the wings uh, down in Hershey, where do you see the Capitals finishing next season? I think that's a tough question. I think it's you look at the teams that have improved around. I mean, Carolina certainly is in go for it mode. I think you've got teams in the Metro that, you know, I think that slot in pretty well behind Carolina. I still kind of feel like it's the Hurricanes and and then everybody else. But I think there's a lot of folks in North Jersey that might have a, a little bit of a different take on that. I think New Jersey is certainly just now hitting their prime. And, you know, they certainly look to be another 100 plus point team and uh, potential home ice in round one. So everything else kind of sifts out after that. Obviously, Eric Carlson coming to Pittsburgh definitely gives a little bit of a boost on the back end of the Penguins. And even though I think they're still very similar in terms of trajectory to Washington, uh, they are still an old team. I think Kyle Dubas has actually done a really nice job in, in retooling. I think they made some foolish decisions under the previous regime, uh, but I think he's come in and and really tried to shore up not only the big things. I mean, it's easy to look at an Eric Carlson and say, yeah, okay, it's a big move. And he moved out some guys that I think are past their prime, like a Mikhail Grandlin, Jan Ruta, whatever. But I think the other thing that Dubas doesn't get a lot of credit for yet is the fact they're retooling their farm system and they needed to because Pittsburgh's farm system was in the dumper and they needed to get better and they're trying to get faster. And they they went out and signed some guys in the offseason. So I, I think they are trying to do exactly what Washington is. I think for the Caps and bringing in a guy like Max Pacioretty, I really no downside to it. I mean, you've got a guy that's a, a proven goal scorer at this level who's had a tough run of injury luck. But, you know, in talking to some medical folks uh, that I trust and ask these kind of questions to, you know, there's really not a lot of fear and something like that recurring. It's just a matter of healing and moving forward. And, you know, I think that that as he rounds back into form, I think he's somebody that can really help this top six. And they need to because I mean, one of the problems last year was they didn't have a lot of goal scoring, especially at five on five. And away from Alex Ovechkin, they didn't get enough production from a lot of guys. And that's what they're going to need. Uh, and I think with, when I say that it's tough to pinpoint where they're going to be, I think a lot of that is based on, are they going to score goals? Is Max Pacioretty going to return to form? Well, if he does, and he's a steal. Uh, and even if he's not all the way there, even if he's 20, 25, that's, that's fine. I, I don't think he doesn't have to be what he was five years ago. He just needs to be a guy that can help out. Uh, on the wing and be able to pump in a few TJ Oshie and staying healthy Tom Wilson and fully returning to form Tommy missed half the year last year uh, and was still fine in his way and now completely healthy as he goes in so is he a 2025 20, goal guy if the answer is yes then okay now we're on to something Anthony Mantha not a good year by any stretch last year but if he's able to improve and there's a lot of reason to think he will because it's a contract year for him he's under a new coach uh, if if he is still part of things here at all, I think he's certainly someone that, uh, you know, he can improve on last year's numbers. So I think there's a lot of reasons you can point to that say the Caps will be better offensively than they were last year, just because it was a struggle. Uh, and I'm excited to see what Spencer Carberry can do with that. All right, so coming up here after the break, we will continue to talk to John Walton about the coaching staff and his outlook for next season. We'll talk about that straight ahead. 
Yeah, being that you bring that up, uh, the transition uh, into this new coaching staff, Spencer Carberry, I believe there is a mandate for uh, the Capitals to win a Stanley Cup, of course, but I think the Capitals selecting Spencer Carberry, they signed him in part to bring along some of the youth to finally make this the season for Connor McMichael and a lot of these players that we've heard about for the longest time down in Hershey. Uh, Spencer Carberry was running the number two power play in Toronto. Well, I know he's going to be the head coach and there is going to be an assistant running the power play. How excited are you to see this new look Capitals under, under Spencer Carberry? Well, I am excited. I, as I said, I've been a Spencer Carberry fan for a long time. I got to know him when he was coaching in South Carolina in the ECHL back in 2015 uh, again, in Hershey, I mean, he's come up through the ranks in the Capitals organization. And you bring up Toronto, I would argue that running the power play for the Maple Leafs is as challenging and public a job as some head coaching jobs in the league. So uh, even though he hasn't been a head coach at the NHL level, he has lots of experience. And I I think he's going to bring that enthusiasm and that work ethic to this team. And I, I'm really excited to see what he can do. And I think, you know, as it will be a process, it doesn't mean that it all happens in the first month, two months, three months, or even his first season here. But, you know, I think that with time, I think he's going to be proven to be a guy like, you know, I, I don't want to compare him to John Cooper, but I think, I think those things are similar that, you know, a guy who was, you know, has come up through the ranks and is highly regarded even upon arrival. And, and, and I think he's, you know, he was sought after and interviewed with other teams too, according to media reports. And, you know, I think there are a lot of uh, organizations, even outside the caps, that were very interested in what he can do. And I'm certainly glad that he's here. Uh, and I think that the caps will be better for it, especially from an offensive standpoint. Uh, so exciting. I, I want to see what this team looks like under, under different leadership and uh, to finally bring along some of this uh, youth here. Just to close it out here, let's talk about... Evgeny Kuznetsov, who was talked about wanting out of D.C., he kind of rebuffed it. And then Mike Vogel said, no, nope, he did say it. So there are some things to consider for me with Evgeny Kuznetsov. Some people say, you know, if you want out, don't let the door hit you on the butt on the way out. For me, uh, the Capitals, for the longest time, were looking for that really strong second line center. And I think that they have it in Evgeny Kuznetsov. I just don't necessarily think that Kuzi... And uh, Peter Laviolette were necessarily always on the same page. For me, I everyone says they should trade out Kuznetsov and Mantha so we can get this really top, you know, top six forward. I think it would be worthwhile to have Kuzi have one more go round under Spencer Carberry at least. What are your thoughts on Kuznetsov? Well, he didn't have a very good year last year. And, you know, he, I mean, Mike Vogel said it much like Dickie Dunn in slap shot. It must be true. So, uh, and, mm -hmm. and certainly, I mean, that's, that's factual as far as we understand, but, you know, having said that, I mean, it, 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 there are certainly issues with him leaving and staying. I mean, if you say, I mean, the biggest thing is that the second, if you did move him, you got a big hole right in the center of the depth right. chart. So I'm inclined to say that, you know, especially with a guy like Spencer, if you're able to, uh, bring him uh, along under a new coach. Uh, you know, I mean, you may have a scenario. I mean, I think, you know, as we're talking here, we've gotten into August. Uh, Brian McClellan is a straight shooter as a general manager, as you're going to find. And when asked the question most recently at the Tom Wilson presser, and he comes out and he talks about, you know, look, I mean, they're looking at options for, for anything along the trade route. They're always trying to improve the team. It takes two teams to agree to that. Uh, and the trade has to make sense for both sides. So, you know, maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't. Uh, but either way, uh, you know, I think you go into September if the team is as construed. And I, like I said it with Mantha before, I, you know, I, I think Anthony should stay because I, even though he did not have the year that I think we all hoped he would last year, uh, being a contract year, bet on yourself, go out and put a number forward that, you know, can get you a new contract somewhere else uh, or, or in Washington, if you like the way things are going. You know, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. And I, I think I'd be okay with that if that comes to pass. Uh, and Kuznetsov, I would say the same thing for the most part. Uh, you know, if he's able to produce, you know, there's a, a chase to 895 here. And you got to get somebody uh, to be able to get Alex Ovechkin the puck. Where other, you know, whether that's Dylan Strom, whether that's Evgeny Kuznetsov, or whether that's somebody else. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. But, you know, I think all these questions will resolve themselves one way or the other when we get to training camp. All right, John, once again, I want to thank you for joining us on this edition of Locked On Capitals. Of course, you are the voice of the Capitals on the radio side, but 
Also, the Caps This Morning podcast will be firing up in September uh, as we, as all Caps fans, look forward to that uh, each and every day during the season, during the week there. So, John, why don't you tell everyone where we can find your work? Okay. Uh, Caps This Morning, uh, where you find your podcasts. Uh, Apple is usually the best place, but there's plenty of others. Depending on where you get your sound, you'll find us. Uh, Just look up Caps This Morning. Uh, we generally go Monday through Friday. Uh, we try and get it out in the morning. Uh, you know, we try and vary the content a little bit, but certainly, I mean, I travel with a team and I'm always around the reporters and the people who are in the room talking to the players and the players themselves. So uh, hopefully if you stop on by and uh, pick us up starting in September, we'll get going uh, right around the start of training camp. So appreciate that. Thank you. All right. I want to thank you once again for joining us on this edition of Locked On Capitals and Things goes out to John Walton for joining us on today's episode. And are you a fan of other D.C. sports? Well, Locked On has got you covered. We have Locked On Nationals, Commanders and Wizards. So no matter what major DC sport it is, Locked On has got you covered. All right, once again, I want to thank you for joining us on this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Dan Holmey, and I'll talk to you again next time.